It's Bumblecast Mini, sponsored by Yuma221. Let's go right into it with this question right here. Why did the metal virus spread through gloves if it slid right off processed materials otherwise? It grew over the hands and then spread to cover the gloves. Or the gloves were porous enough with the loosely woven fibers that it just kind of oozed through and looked like it covered. It's it, it's the rule of cool. It, that's just what the visuals were. Maybe, maybe the gloves are actually part of the character's hands. Maybe. Ew. Mm. Ew. Mm. Think about that one. It's like Strong Bad's boxing gloves. He doesn't take them off because he can't. <laughs> They're, he literally has boxing glove hands. <laughs> the boxing gloves are his hands. <laughs> what would Serge and Kit's favorite genres of music be? Oh, you know the answer to this joke now. <laughs> Kit likes whatever Serge tells him to like. <laughs> exactly. Hey, you're the one who started it. Don't be so dismissive. Yeah, I know, and I'm tired of the joke already. Well, <laughs> you shouldn't have said it. Well, that that goes for most of this show, doesn't it? <sighs> um, yeah, probably. Surge, Surge, I imagine, is like very counterculture stuff. Like she likes punk, but I don't mean like pop punk. Your Green Day. Everybody already knows the lyrics. I mean like the obscure stuff where you need a tetanus shot before you go into the venue punk, like real hard on the ears, uh, maybe crosses into grunge metal here and there. And just like, not quite screamo. That's its own sub genre, but you know, it just anything that is really kind of all about the energy and just being kind of caustic to the ears. It isn't supposed to be melodic. It's supposed to be, an expression mm-hmm. um kit left to his own devices i imagine would like a lot of of that uh what's the term y- your trance stuff your real like light directionless anya-esque just there are tones and you can claim that's music oh, okay that's what i said in yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> totally, no, totally didn't mispronounce that no no trance is a very different thing than that ian trance is like EDM, it's electronic uh, stuff like that. Oh, that yeah. would explain why I can't find anything that I'm looking for. Yeah, no, no, no. Trance is yeah. It's not what music. I, I don't think it's music what, that what necessarily puts you in a, into a trance. I think you're thinking of like, uh, I don't know. I guess world music. <laughs> is that what it's called? Okay. Um, Enya in particular is Celtic, Celtic music. So, but yeah, I know what you mean. No. Well, even if I have the terms wrong, you, you get what I'm going for. Yes. Yes. I understand. This is why you direct all your musical questions to Kyle. Like, yeah. New age world music. Yeah. That's, that's, that's more, that's more close. I can see that. I can definitely see that for kids. And um, here's another question. What is the nature of Amy's woman's intuition? Quote unquote. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think that was one particular instance of, trying to localize or explain away her perceptions. I honestly don't know what the thinking is behind that word or that phrase. Is that like how Eggman is a feminist? (laughs) I mean, probably falls within the same wheelhouse. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, he is an equal opportunity uh, world conqueror. (laughs) He does not care about your gender. He just cares about your loyalty. (laughs) How accurate is Amy's fortune telling? I wouldn't go betting your house on it, but it should get you reasonably close to what you're going for. It's probably closer than reality. You know, it might actually it's better than just making a wild guess. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Why were... That's the danger of any kind of card reading precognition or divination is it all depends on your reading of the cards. The cards can tell you only so much. You have to make it make sense. Yeah, they don't put many words on them, <laughs> so <laughs> the books that come with them are pretty wordy. Yeah. So I, I figure Amy's got a decent understanding of it. Like, if she understands that if the cards are telling her this general idea, she knows that she's in the right ballpark. And if you know things come out and she does not quite get it, it's more that she's doing the reading wrong, or she doesn't understand the greater circumstances. So that she's giving the forewarning, but it doesn't give you all the details. So 
she doesn't know what to expect, which would be the same if you got like any kind of coded message or, you know, half a transmission, same kind of idea. You you get an idea that something's coming, but you don't know what. Mm -hmm. It's as accurate as the plot needs it to be. I think that's the answer. (laughs) Pretty much. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They were very, very accurate in Sonic Origins. Mm, Extremely. (laughs) Why were Amy's tarot cards renamed as fortune cards? Well, one is they aren't true tarot cards. Like the tarot cards have very distinct major arcana and such. So the fortune cards are inspired by but they are not exact perfect one-to-ones. Right. Um, Two, unfortunately, tarot cards come with a certain stigma to certain audiences. Yep. So fortune cards kind of hopefully takes the edge off. I mean, some folks are not going to like them as some kind of whatever they think it is, pagan rituals or whatever. You know, the underlying concept of mysticism may ruffle feathers and that, you know, you can't help that. But Mm -hmm. if folks are hung up on tarot specifically, it's like, no, this is child safe brand fortune cards. Oh, well, that's fine then. (laughs) Yes, yes. Don't pay too much attention to it. There's no magic in Sonic. These are not the droids you are looking for. Is possession of superpowers slash special abilities exclusive to main and secondary characters only? Are background characters allowed to have them, like displaying super strength or flight? Or is there more tight control over who gets what, over who or what gets them? That hasn't really been explored in the series. I would imagine it's not a super common trait, but it also kind of depends on how broad you want the definition of superpowers to be. Because in Sonic Forces, the Avatar character is supposed to be just some schlub, some random nobody. And they're still able to perform some pretty impressive acrobatic feats. Now, granted, some of that is gameplay element, but, you know, it's supposed to be within reason that your character is able to do these things. So that might just be baseline skill for whatever we're calling them, animals, Mobians, Nermies. (laughs) Uh, So if that's their baseline, then what counts as superpower, you know, that's already superhuman compared to most humans. Uh, we're never going to get, we're never going to get over Nermies, are we? <laughs> never going to get over Nermies. Got Nermies its way into your brain. Uh, can Metal Sonic eventually run... becomes normalized? Never. Can Metal Sonic run Crisis? <laughs> oh yeah, all features fully maxed out. He can run Crisis Three, but can't do anything else while it's running. <laughs> he can run Crisis Three three times. <laughs> Yeah, but he just has to stand there while he's processing it all. Yeah. I'm being asked if he can run Doom. (laughs) Uh, Obviously. (laughs) Doom is child's play for him. can run Doom. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, freaking Tails' little handheld computer thing, he could run Doom. (laughs) I'm pretty sure you could just write down the base code on a sheet of paper, feed it to a wisp, and it could run Doom. (laughs) I mean, I think Tails' little computer could probably run Doom 2016. <laughs> I don't think Belle could run Doom, though. Oh, she could. She absolutely could. Okay, maybe she could run Doom, but you'd never know it. She's too busy playing it inside her head. <laughs> oh, boy. You attach a piece of wax paper to a fork and stick it in an outlet, it can run Doom. <laughs> you know, it... it and needs a little bit more optimization than that. <laughs> Two forks. Uh, and an extra paper clip. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Is Tails a typical zoomer? Can he work on his inventions without hitting his vape first? And yes, he can smoke. Ages are not canon anymore. No. No. <laughs> No, no more, no tail smoking. He only did that once, and that was just to make a point. That was only because we needed a moral lesson. That's no good. I'm sorry, that whole ages aren't canon anymore line. That cracked me up. I mean, it is very, it's very good. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm coming but back no. to bite you. <laughs> <laughs> Tails knows that consuming any kind of vaporized particulate matter is not good for your lungs, so he does not vape. Okay, good. Does he do anything uh, that other Zoomers do? I don't know. It's just a funny thing is that it's not Zoomers that I see vaping. I, I never see Zoomers vaping. It's always the older people, either around my age or older. <laughs> it's like what's what? that the older generation blaming the younger ones for stuff no oh, get out of here for the things they are already they're doing no no never anyway <laughs> that wasn't the question stay on target stay on target <laughs> all right that being said i'm sure tails could build a vape that could run doom <laughs> of course he could of course, of course he does all right, these next two questions are a little beefy, so here we go. As Neo, Metal Sonic has, had displayed a high degree of sapience and self-awareness, suffering a full-on existential crisis because of it, which is what led him led to him dethroning his master and turning him in, himself into Metal Overlord. Yet after Heroes, he went back to being a mute machine with no will of his own. This is supported by a Sonic Channel profile stating that Eggman had reverted him to his previous state before his mental capacity started evolving due to his advanced AI chip. In IDW, however, which now seems to be canon, Metal is clearly sentient again, but blindly loyal to Eggman all the same, and with no traces of his aforementioned crisis, even though it wasn't resolved. So what's the situation here? To what degree has Eggman taken away Metal's capacity for higher thinking, if at all? Does Metal Sonic still think he's the real Sonic, while paradoxically knowing that's not the case? Do his failures to defeat Sonic still weigh heavily on him? Or has that all been brushed aside with a good old line of code or two from the Doctor? The reverting of Metal Sonic is more that he isn't a grand schemer or orchestrator or speaker. It is he is a enforcer. He is a tool that serves Eggman. He is no longer capable of going against his will, even if he wants to on occasion. It's he just he's hard coded to not be able to betray Eggman and his abilities have been scaled back to their base level in which he is, you know, a flying murder machine, not a DNA copying uh, Mega Man X Maverick when you get down to it. <laughs> kind of. Uh, he's he still aspires to be the one true Sonic. Uh, what that means, how that can even make sense is something that everybody has to wrestle with to a degree as much as he does. Uh, it's one of my favorite side stories in metal virus, to be honest, when he gets to a pool of metal virus, you know, looks at the monitors and sees Sonic dealing with the infection and dips his hand into it. And he's unaffected, which right there tells you you're not Sonic. And there's just that single panel of him contemplating that. And that was, Oh, that was good. That was a good bit of storytelling. So that's where he is right now. He is a very focused enforcer for Eggman who does still aspire to overcome and supplant Sonic. That doesn't necessarily make perfect sense, but when that's what you're coded to do, why does it have to make sense? You know, that is your literal reason for being. So that's all you do, if, even if you don't have the capacity to think on it more deeply. We should also make clear that uh, you didn't write that particular low moment, so this isn't you, like, patting yourself on the back. Like, oh, no, 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 no. This was in the Like, end. oh, yeah. man, I'm such a good storyteller. I'm Ian Flynn. <laughs> Bow to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just putting it out there because I know what, some people like to twist yeah, the know, words I know, around. I know, I, know, I, know. I know they like to twist everything around. So, you know, I'll give them something more to twist around. So there you go. <laughs> Please excuse my critical tone, but this has been bothering me recently. I noticed there's a narrative trend in IDW to rely on tragedy in characterizing new, particularly female original characters who are meant to be in the spotlight for the duration of their designated story arcs, namely Whisper, Bell, and Surge. Whisper felt like something new relative to the games, as our only main character with a tragic backstory by then was Shadow. So it was somewhat fresh to have someone who wasn't upbeat or self-assured, and who has a troubled past to reckon with. But then Belle came along, and she repeats Whisper's beats. Then Surge came along, and the same thing was done to her, but only partially, to be fair. Maybe I'm being harsh here, but these characters come off as woobies. 
They spend a not insignificant part of their spotlight crying and or being miserable, again, applies less to Surge, and the audience ends up feeling sorry for them. For example, Pete felt bad Pete, for example, people felt bad for Surge so much that issue fifty caused a wildfire among the reader base, despite her being a legitimately awful person and Sonic being in his right for doing what he did then. Melancholy and tragedy seem to be the go-to narrative tools for quickly characterizing any new main female OC with a spotlight arc. With Tangle, with only Tangle being the exception so far. This bothered me because, contrary to popular belief, tragedy and suffering don't necessarily make good characters. They're just narrative tools like any other. Sonic, for example, is the most complex and thematic is the most complex and thematically compelling character in the series. It has no tragic backstory or personal demons to speak of. I'm worried this trend might carry over to the games now that Frontier seems to be setting the foundation for more serious storytelling in the future, because it can get real tired real quick. Am I wildly off base here, or has the writing team noticed this recurrence? I don't think you're wildly off base. I think it's a legitimate criticism. I think that there is some, I don't want to say counter argument, because I don't want to be argumentative, but I think there are some counterpoints that can be brought up, like Tangle and Jewel neither have really a tragic backstory to to deal with. And Kit is male coded and he has an equally tragic backstory to uh, surge. I wouldn't say that bell and whispers carried followed the same beats. They both had their own personal tragedies, but they were very different. Yeah. I would argue. I think the greater issue here is the fact that a lot of the more prominent new characters we've been introducing are female because the series doesn't have a lot of standout female characters. Yes, we have Amy. Yes, we have Rouge. Yes, we have Cream. But that's up against Sonic Tails, Knuckles, Eggman, Vector, Espio, Charmy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You didn't forget you know, Blaze, working... but I mean, she's always in another dimension. So that's even more, she's even more separated from everything. So anyway, just want to right. throw and Blaze then, out there. You know, because, for... Yes. <laughs> And if we're keeping, you know, tallies here, then they get countered by Silver, another somewhat otherworldly individual and, you know, another male character. Right. So I think it's more of a matter of we've been focusing on expanding the female cast rather than it's an issue of everyone's got to have a tragic backstory. I mean, Rough and Tumble are not nearly as focused as... Surge and Kit, we want Rough and Tumble to be the goofy villains that you don't mind get pummeled. But Surge and Kit, we want to be more compelling and driving so they get the more narrative background. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, one of the responses is just how uh, downcast and emotionally draining <laughs> things have kind of been since Metal Virus. Mm -hmm. like that was a rough ride even if you loved that series it was a rough ride and then bell has been put through the ringer and then we've got surge and kit and starline and all that so in general yeah the feedback we've gotten is let let's maybe tone things to a little brighter a little happier a little <laughs> less tragic it's sonic for pity's sake i mean not that we did anything wrong or bad but it's time to switch gears a little bit yeah yeah, maybe, maybe. I don't know though. Sometimes it's fun. Sometimes it's fun to make them suffer. Because then when they get, when they because oh, then when they overcome it, it's like yeah, they did it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, but then, I but do get that. I do was so understand that that uh, criticism. Conversely, well. what was just as engaging was you know Tangle's uh, positivity. You know, she learns of all this negativity, and her response is to be more supportive. Mm -hmm. And to be more proactive. So there, there's, you, you're right. There are other tools to be used in other directions to take. So, yeah, absolutely. You got to have a little bit of a balance, you know, speaking hmm. of. And their concern is there's, it, it's unbalanced. So. Yep. Yeah, right. Try, just trying to assu assuage those fears. Yes. All right. Well, we have achieved balance. So I think we can go. <laughs> I'm glad you feel balanced. <laughs> Tell me what it's like one day. <laughs> oh, no, my sense of balance is awful. Never mind. We're not balanced at all. <laughs> I was just trying to make a transition, Ian, and you completely ruined it. No. Yes, I did. That's what I'm here for. Thank you to Yuma221 for sponsoring this episode. If you want a Bumblecast mini of your own, head over to patreon.com slash Bumblecast, ko com slash Bumblecast, or become a comparable member on YouTube. We'll see you in the next one.
I mean, I think people are forgetting Starline. He's male. He's a guy. And uh, he has yeah, a very... he doesn't have a tragic backstory. Uh, then why is he the way he is? Because <laughs> he's a jerk. <laughs> well, what made him a jerk? <laughs> yeah, sometimes people are just jerks. Yeah, I know. I know. I thought he did say... I thought there was something where he... Uh, you did say something where he was like his family... I don't know. I thought you said something about his family, but that may have just been a joke on the bubble cast and not something in the book. I think so, yeah. <laughs> and even so, it was probably from his perspective. It's like, oh, <laughs> my family never appreciated my genius. You put the pet in the microwave, Starline. You're well, a bad person. Well, We're sorry we sired you. Get out of the house. Well, I it mean, was for science. You don't understand me. Oh. Well, I mean, Knuckles' dad did that, and he was apparently an amazing person. It depends on who you ask. <laughs> I think well, there's only one person who really agrees with that. No, there's a few more. <laughs> but there's, yeah, only one person who probably cared to argue with you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't to argue at all. No, no, not really. <laughs>